Um, we're going to go ahead and call tonight's EPD committee meeting to order at 6 p.m. on December 6th. All committee members are present, uh, staff present, uh, city administrator, as well as the community development director, Van Brock. Uh, we're going to open it up for the first public comment period. Do you have anybody who wants to provide public comment tonight? If not, you get another bite of the apple in a few minutes. Reading approval of minutes, what do I hear? Uh, I will approve, uh, make a motion to approve the meeting as it's made. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, I'll better say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Minutes are approved as presented. That brings us to reports, communications from city officers. Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Matney. Thank you, uh, council members. Uh, just uh, for information, our budget stands at 63% of an ideal 57% remaining budget. So we're doing really good there. Uh, we continue to experience good economic opportunities. Bridgeway City Center are making good progress. We'll have a report from uh, the Parker Group tonight. Uh, staff continues to meet with uh, development groups uh, regarding other sites in, in and around City Center and other areas of the city. And uh, there are several projects that uh, are giving great consideration in the moment. And, I wish we could talk about all of the opportunities that are coming our way, but eventually we'll, we'll be able to publicize some of those, hopefully. Um, our cultural center continues to be a hub of activity for the city. Uh, this year, our tree lighting saw over 500 people attend, 29 vendors who participated in our Christmas market, along with food trucks. And then next year, hopefully, the addition of deck and chairs will be another good opportunity to drive our community to making good connections, uh, bringing more tourism into our city, and celebrating the community spirit. Uh, our cultural Christmas performance of Hooray for Holidays goes one more weekend. It's going really, really well. If you haven't had an opportunity to experience that, highly recommend it. It's a great show. I've been twice. I'll make it one more time just <laughs> to make sure I'm in the holiday spirit this year. And if, and if, and if I uh, don't get too far afield, I'll take Matthew Fleming with me, where it's Yase yeah, Yase. <laughs> Uh, and let me just say thanks to um, all of our departments, uh, fire department, uh, police department, public works. Uh, I, I would say especially, but I'll, I'll get in trouble for saying that, but especially those guys. Um, uh, PDF services, every department pitches in and helps make our department go. We, we couldn't operate without uh, the work that those uh, men and women do for all of us at the city. So thank you guys so very much. Uh, we've got a new program uh, led by retired choral director, Ms. Pam Mayfield. She was at Malden High School for 30 years, 38 years. I don't know, some, something like that. Phenomenal uh, voice in our city, uh, well loved in our community, and she agreed to start a new program with us called Malden City Singers. Uh, it's a community choir. Their first year, we, had over, we have over 60 members in their first season, and they're going to present their first concert December 19th at 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. And I was looking at ticket sales today, and the 3 o'clock is almost sold out, and the 6 o'clock is about halfway sold out. So I would highly recommend, if you're interested, tickets are $6 a uh, piece, which is very, very reasonable. Uh, it'll be a great choral program, and it's phenomenal. We've got great art classes at our center. Um, our cultural foundation is hard at work. Um, Mrs. King has determined to raise us a million dollars this year, and uh, their upcoming fundraiser is in February. So a lot of good things happening in, in our, our department, and thank you for the opportunity to serve. Thank you, Mr. Broad. Any questions for Ben? <coughs> Mr. Craig. I just wanted to comment. I'm uh, real impressed with the tree lighting. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It looked great. And I like the discussion about uh, bigger tree next year. <laughs> Matt's got that thing here. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else for Mr. Broad? All right, then um, I'm going to go ahead and ask Mr. Drew Parker to come forward. This is actually going to be a new standing committee item uh, for EPD. Uh, Drew is going to talk about what's happening with his pieces of city center village, so that um, we can we can stay updated and, and share the, the good news with. Everybody who's excited about what's going on in the city center village. So, Drew, I'm going to talk to you. Thank you, Seth. Thank you all for having me here tonight. Excited to give you an update. Um, so, I'll be uh, as brief as I can, but I want to get you um, fully informed on everything that we've done and then what to look forward to. So, all right, next slide, Brandon. 
Uh, starting with One East Butler, which is the corner of Butler and Lawrence Road, uh, we are underway. We closed on that building in May. That began construction in September. We have signed two tenants that we're very excited about, Bohemian Hall out of Charleston, and then, of course, uh, locally grown Sully Steamers. We are in negotiations uh, on the other two spaces. I mean, there's four total tenant spaces, and we'll be announcing something soon on those, but uh, very excited about the prospects we have for the, for the two remaining spaces. So as soon as I can let you know, we'll be uh, giving everybody an update on that. But we are going to be targeting uh, sorry, right. so, sorry. Uh, we're going to be targeting the grand opening of One East Butler, which we're we'll calling Maverick Station, in the spring of 2022, uh, targeting April or May. So, looking forward to that. Uh, Maverick Yards is the uh, the bigger chunk where the current public works buildings are. Um, we've got a uh, a lot of updates on that. We've completed our architecture and engineering plans on the uh, on the site just um, back in November 26th. We've had a lot of coordination meetings with City of Alton, DOT, Railroad, uh, Cotransco, the uh, project management uh, company doing the, the new road that will be going through the site. Everything's going well on all fronts. Um, we've got preliminary townhome subdivision uh, that we submitted and received approval on back in October. Uh, we're in the process of submitting for our site permits for the townhomes and for the pickle yard. Um, and then uh, as a side note, just to show you our commitment level, um, the entire architecture, design, food and beverage, and construction team went to San Antonio a few weekends ago to study a similar concept to the pickle yard and uh, meet with management there to uh, understand, uh, better understand the, the look, the feel, and the operation of it. Okay. It went really well. So uh, more to come on that, but that's that's in regards to the pickle yard, which we'll be putting out a lot of press on pretty soon. All right, so the timeline going forward. Uh, next slide, yes. We've got um, construction beginning in the first quarter of 2022. So, um, Probably on the earlier side of, of, of that, <laughs> February and, or March uh, timeframe, getting kicked off there. So we're rapidly moving on into that phase. Uh, it'll begin with environmental cleanup and abatement, uh, roll into demo, demolition of the existing buildings, except for where the Pickwick Yard is going, which is the existing Healy Brown building. Uh, site work is expected to take about five months, and then we'll begin. Um, the true construction of the uh, townhomes in Bickle Yard. So for the Bickle Yard, we're targeting um, being in business next year, in the, uh, during the fall of next year. The townhomes, of course, will take a little bit longer, uh, but we'll be uh, putting those on the market for sale beginning at some point in the spring of next year. And, uh, we will probably not be able to finish those fully until uh, early 2020. That's kind of a, a quick rundown. Um, in some of the renderings on the pictures you see there, some updated uh, photos of the townhomes and the Pickle Yard as well. Just to give a brief um, summary of the Pickle Yard for those that don't know, the Pickle Yard is a food hall entertainment center that is centered around pickleball. And I uh, think um, top golf, but with pickleball instead of, of uh, golf. So. Extremely excited about that. It would be a place where families can come, yeah, singles, whoever can come, get a great meal. You don't have to like pickleball. Uh, we think you're going to leave there loving pickleball, though. Um, there will be over 40 televisions uh, and a couple of big screen televisions. So uh, if you're a sports fanatic, you can catch any, any of the games there as well. Uh, very excited about that. And then the townhomes will be all for sale. And um, the two and three bedroom plans, all with garages uh, attached to them. So that's a quick rundown. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer anything. Yeah. Any questions for sure? All right. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate it. We have no unfinished business. We have no new business. Uh, this is the second period for public comment. Anybody? 
Would like to speak? Hearing none, may concerns? Hearing none, what about your own turn? Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? Hearing none, I'm afraid to say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it, and we are adjourned at 16. Uh, no one online has indicated they would like to speak. Very good. Uh, next item is going to be reading approval of minutes either for the November 1st, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as submitted. Uh, any other discussion? Carrie, no one is in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next item is going to be a full communication from the city officers. First up is Mr. Matten. Yeah, Mr. Reynolds, uh, Chairman, members of the committee, I do not have uh, much as far as the budget. We're online uh, where we need to be at this time. We're quickly approaching halfway through the fiscal year uh, in our weekly meetings with the finance department. We haven't seen any abnormalities that would require any actions on behalf of council, uh, but we're right where we should be right now. Uh, Ms. Abercrombie, I'm assuming you're speaking to Ms. Abercrombie as well. Uh, yes, Ms. Abercrombie is out at office today. Uh, last one's going to be Mr. Mark Putnam, our HR director. This is for a health insurance renewal. Thank you, Chairman Rose. Thank you, committee. Uh, proud to be in front of you today and tell you that we had uh, an overview of the uh, renewal process. We had a good year. This last year in 2020, uh, 20, uh, 2021, I'm sorry. Uh, not a great year like we did in 2020, but we are going to put back uh, into the reserve somewhere between $170,000 and $190,000 uh, from the insurance fund back into reserve. So uh, not as good as we had last year, which we did about 300000 but still a good year considering the number of claims and everything that we had going through. Uh, we will be staying with Anchor and we will be staying with Americas and all of the insurance companies. We're staying uh, part of the life and the critical illness, all that will stay the same. Um, we also are going to have a uh, degree co contract again with Proactive MD. Uh, for a lot of our employees, that has become a mainstay for them. They uh, not only use it for uh, urgent care, they use it for their main doctor. Now. We have also expanded with them. They are now going to be doing uh, fire and police department physicals. Uh, so we will have that not in Greenville, but here in Malden, and also doing that. And in early 2022, we began a, uh, they will be doing all drug screens and a new physical for all new hires. So we're going to kind of expand that for new hires and doing that with proactive. Um, uh, also, with our pharmacy group, Southern Scripts, we estimate that we will put back $30,000 back toward the reserve again for using um, uh, discounts and, and coupons uh, with our pharmacy group. Uh, we used to not do that, uh, but with Southern Scripts, we have been doing that for the last two years. So that's another uh, amount of money that we're bringing back to help offset some of our uh, our uh, cost. Uh, but again, a good year, not a great year, but we will be maintaining exactly what we have. And uh, as most of you know from my constant emails, we are having open enrollment tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, and then we will be done with that process for this year. Okay. Any questions? Any questions for Ms. Putnam? Ms. Putnam. 
Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Um, Mr. Patton, were there any rate increases on the employee side? Uh, on the employee side, we did see a 5% increase, and it was not from Anchor. It was from uh, what we call a gout insurance group uh, that we we, uh, we did experience that. Uh, and I was kind of surprised with that, but it's one of those things where insurance, you bet you'll, you'll use it, they bet you won't. Uh, but because of that, uh, that, that's the only increase that anybody will see. Good. And again, as I mentioned, I think last month, thank you and staff and any committees that were involved in, um, again, <laughs> doing what we kind of set you up for three or four years ago and looking outside the box. And I, I, I think we're heading in the right direction. Yeah. So thank you for your hard work. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I believe, I know we are heading in the right direction. The way that we do it now gives us so much visibility to what's going on. And uh, some nights it causes me to stay awake and worry, well, <laughs> what is this one going to do or that claim? But uh, we are heading in the right direction. Well, and one last comment is evident of that with us going to proactive for fire and police for physicals and drug testing and all of that. So that's yes. a, a smart move, and I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ms. King. You actually touched on a little bit of what I was going to ask about. So with the physical is going through proactive. Now, um, talk to me about how we help in the event that there are things that come up in a physical and if we have wellness programs that would help um, the employee if something comes up on a physical that we can help them address. Yeah, and, and that's one thing that proactive is helping because that is giving a lot of our employees who are not normally going to the doctor uh, uh, many of our employees don't have a main position or primary position. They just go when they get sick. Now they go to proactive. There, we probably have 25 to 30 employees that go every month to proactive just because that way they can get their high blood pressure medication or something else there at no cost. But by them going there, it's not just them getting their medication. They are actually being seen by a doctor. They are actually being, you know, their blood pressure is monitored. They talk about it. And that has got a lot of, um, it, it's very good for us because our, our employees are talking about their, their health and they are seeing someone on a regular basis. Now. And that's helping us too. And I think that's one reason we're seeing the years that we are seeing. We're hitting all of a lot of things. Right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Madden, anything to add? Uh, well, I just would like to just confirm that the, the employees would, of course, only will not have to pay anything for health insurance and dependent care coverage uh, uh, will be what it was for the previous year. So any rate increases was, was absorbed by the, the city due to its budgeting. Council approved the budget already for it, and it will be absorbed through that. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, any other questions? Uh, Mr. Madden, we talked a little bit about potentially trying to roll the open enrollment or relook at the open enrollment in six months to tie our budget a little better. You want to give us an update on that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so there, there is an option. Right now, our fiscal year runs, of course, from July 1st to June 30th. Our um, health insurance runs on the calendar year, so from January to December. And right now, the way the city budgets for health insurance they have a little bit of a um, benefit in that they can see the actual cost for the renewal because you have six months of actual data. Whereas if you move to your fiscal year with your health insurance renewal, you don't have that actual data. You're kind of projecting um, at that point. Um, the, the bonus of that is of course, you know what the numbers are. So when financing, Mark worked together to budget for the next year. It's more of a more 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 of more of a accurate picture of what it probably should be, as opposed to a full projection, because you're only projecting for six months. If we went to uh, a, a health renewal that occurs with our fiscal year, from July 1st to June 30th, it would be a full 12 month projection. Um, so it's it's really a um, preference that the council may want to have. Uh, you would be able to give your health insurance renewal approval while you approve the budget. Um, 
you do the same thing now, except that you approve a budget and then staff works with the health insurance companies and uh, the employee engagement committee and then selects a health insurance provider. Um, but it's really council's preference. And th at this point, we could extend it just for six months. There shouldn't really be any rate changes. And that will allow you to go back uh, during the fiscal year, uh, during the budget cycle and then approve it again. But keep in mind, if, if council moves with that approach, the city would still have to go out and get bids. And at that point, we don't think we would see a major increase. But when you go out and get bids, a lot of times you will see bumps in, in your rates. Um, so that's also important to keep in mind. Um, if, if the city wanted to move forward for 18 months, we would probably see a significant increase uh, to line it up with the fiscal year. So at this point, it's a preference. Uh, Holly and I discussed this last week um, to make sure that if the city moved to health insurance renewal that occurs with the fiscal year, how would that impact her ability to project the budget? Um, there really wouldn't be an a, a impact. It just, she would have a more accurate projection the way we do it now, so. All right, hearing that, we actually have one of the students of all these videos who we were at the time. So we have another chance to do new business. We have another item for public comment if there is any. Hearing on, what do I have on committee concerns? Very good. Well, we have a chairman. Seconded. Have a motion. Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. This committee meeting is adjourned. The time is 6 23. The next committee meeting must be held. All right. Call the meeting of public works committee uh, for work. It is 6 44. Uh, we have the committee members here myself, uh, King, and Mr. Reynolds. Uh, First thing is public comments. Do we have public comments at this time? Mr. Madden, no one? No, no one online has indicated that they would like to speak. All right. Uh, reading the approval minutes, go ahead here. Motion to approve this minute. I have a motion. I have a second. I have a second. Any discussion? No, I'm not that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. I nice have it. Move on. Uh, report uh, from the plan. Uh, Thank you, Chair Gerson, for uh, Right off the bat, we're supposed to have about 58% of our budget left at this time of the year. Uh, and all the budgets. Um, sewers at 78, streets at 67, sanitation at 59, foods at 56, and parks at 63. So um, we're all right there or have money to spend. Um, as far as other um, items to bring to your attention, uh, as part of the new technical specifications uh, for the sewer system uh, from REWA, they were the, the technical specifications were adopted. In August, there was a requirement for capacity management operation uh, and maintenance, a CMOM requirement for the city. Uh, the due date was November 28th. Uh, I, we, I opted to, to generate this report in the house. Um, it, a summary of it, it, it identifies our goals. Uh, it, it identifies the organizational structure of the city, public works of, of each division. It identifies the system, what we have, how old, you know, our thing, where things are, how many manholes. Um, we needed to generate a sanitary sewer overflow response report uh, plan. Uh, we also need to identify how we deal with loops, specials, and grease, how our cleaning program, inspection programs, how we maintain easements and pump stations. It goes so far into the weeds, like it. it it identifies every single component at every pump station and provides specifications for it. Uh, it, it, it includes uh, assessments of our systems, uh, flow studies, INI studies, uh, both from Rewa and Fraser Engineering, um, all the budgets for the last decade, 
and then, and then also capital planning, which we've been doing very well on. Um, it was submitted ahead of time. Um, it was just at 397 pages. Uh, if any of you would like a copy, I, I, I'm more willing to print one for you. Uh, but we have satisfied the requirements of Rewild for doing everything they ask. Um, I just want to let you guys know. Feedback from them? No, they, they still have to review it. <laughs> Questions for Lynn. All right. Thank you. All right. There is no unfinished business. Let's move on to new business. So we rehab program. Yes. So uh, the city has a, a, a contract with Fraser Engineering to provide us uh, engineering services. And every year when we set money aside for rehabilitation or rehab. Uh, we, we make amendments to that contract with Fraser Engineering. And uh, if what you have before you are amendments three and four to the original contract dated to uh, March, 2015. Uh, as you know, in your fiscal of the year 2022 budget, you guys set aside $304,000. This was a match to the $500,000 grant that we got from the Rural Infrastructure Authority. Uh, that $804,000 is going to be uh, relining uh, sewer lines in, in Basin 5. Uh, in addition, as part of the ARPA funding, uh, we, we set aside $600,000 for uh, additional rehabilitation efforts in our sewer system. And so Amendment 3 deals with giving Fraser the authority to move forward with the 304 matching RIA grant. And four is for um, the work to uh, to use the ARPA spending. <clears throat> yes, sir. Just real quick. So my understanding is basically this is just a scope change with the new funds that we have from the government. Right? Yes, we uh, we do this every year. We just from whatever you guys budget, then we amend Fraser contract. I bring it before you. It goes to council. Questions? Anyone? Okay, I do have a motion. Um, Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion um, to board a full council the um, approval of amendments three and four from the original agreement dated March 17th between the city of Malden and Fraser Engineering. So I, have a, I have a motion. Second. And I have a second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. As have it, and this will be forwarded to full committee. Sorry, full uh, council. All right. Now the next agenda item is uh, an authorization uh, to approve a contract with Schindler Custom for the maintenance of the elevated senior center. As you know, uh, during the last bit of renovations to the senior center, we installed a new elevator. Elevators come out of the box with a warranty. When the warranty ends, you have a uh, maintenance contract. You don't have a maintenance contract, they avoid warranty in every part. We have elevators at the sports center, senior center, and city hall. Uh, we're out of that period from when we just installed it. Now we actually have to sign a contract for a maintenance agreement. And so, what you have in front of you is a five year um, uh, maintenance contract with Schindler Custom. They're the uh, Manufacturers of the elevator uh, at an annual cost of four thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars. <throat> What's on here, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Chairman? I make a motion to approve the contract with Schindler Custom for the maintenance of the elevator at the senior center. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any second. Any discussion? Is this right? Is this contract in line with what our other maintenance? Elevator maintenance services are. And as far as what the maintenance agreement covers, yes. Uh, as far as the duration, no. Um, part of when they install an elevator, they kind of tell you if you don't sign the contract by this date, then you automatically start a 10 year contract. And so we have um, one five year contract, one 10 year contract. And we negotiated this one to be a five year rather than a 10 year. 
Right here. Sorry, part of the session. All right, are those all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. All right, the ayes have it. Um, we move on to the next one. We're going to move uh, legislation and delegation of transport committee participation hearing. Uh, Chairman, members of the committee, uh, what's before you is a uh, participation agreement with the GLDTC for the Municipal Match Paving Program. Staff is requesting approval of the agreement, which details the uh, amount of funding the city is contributing to the project for this year, along with the contributions of the GLDTC. Also a part of this request is uh, staff is recommending that the council appropriate an additional $180,000 towards this program, which would increase the amount, the funding of participation amount of the city uh, to, uh, along with GLDTC's amount to uh, $615,000. Uh, if, if you recall, uh, the city incurred revenue losses uh, due to the COVID a pandemic, uh, that loss of revenue was calculated and presented to council uh, using some of the ARPA funds that were awarded to the city. Uh, staff presented a recommended funding plan for the loss of revenue. Uh, that conservative projections at those time, at that time, uh, staff has spent uh, some of that those funds and the amount spent is less than what was budgeted. And so this, uh, the 180,000 additional funds that are there and uh, staff's recommendation is to apply it, apply it to uh, this participation agreement with the GLDTC. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, just just to clarify, the one hundred eighty thousand dollars, none of that is ARPA funds. Just wanted to make sure that was clear because I mentioned ARPA, so I, I don't want it to come across as if the city is using ARPA funds to pave roads because there no ARPA funds are being used to pave roads. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Ayes have it. Motion moves to the council. Lastly, the trail feasibility study. Uh, chairman, members of committee, um, earlier this year, city council appro uh, appropriated funds to conduct the feasibility study for a section of the Swamp Rabbit Trail uh, right off of East Butler Road cutting across through an existing floodplain and uh, intersecting with Corn Road. So the what's before you is a request to move forward with an agreement with Davis and Floyd to conduct a feasibility study that will provide a uh, estimated project cost and a conceptual trail uh, alignment uh, amongst other things. Uh, and so what's, what you have is an agreement with Davis and Floyd to perform this work. Looking at the design, it, uh, it, goes, it ends up uh, right across uh, from the high school property, essentially. That's correct. Is the future goal to go across there? Uh, yes. Uh, the, yeah, and discussions with Davis and Floyd uh, is to include a potential crosswalk to Malden High School. All right. What do I hear? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to motion to forward to full council the agreement with um, Davis and Floyd for the trial feasibility study. Motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor, where did it take us to deploy? Um, was this put out for bid? Uh, yes, Mr. Reynolds, uh, per the city's procurement process, because it's under $25,000, it wasn't a, a formal RFP process, but formal requests were made to three firms who submitted proposals and staff reviewed those proposals and selected Davidson Floyd. Great. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor of... Uh... Agreeing to the trail feasibility study. Uh, Aye. Opposed, like side. Right. With that, uh, the ayes have it. This is what we call conversation. All right. Any public comments? Mutual public comments. Uh, no one online has indicated that they would like to speak. Committee concerns. I heard recently there was a need sitting down. How's that? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, trucks working on Saturday. We, we have been working over the weekends. Uh, we, we have moving trucks and leave trucks out. Um, we're, we're working diligently, uh, just like everyone else, we're dealing with the staffing issues. Um, you know, difficult times. I don't think we're doing everything we can. Um, this was a softball to let everyone know how hard the public works. Department is working beyond uh, just leaving at the twelve. We do what we got to do, but uh, no, the least it's a funny anecdote. Last week I ran a truck and everything on the left side of Bethel Road, so from CVS all the way down, everything on the left hand side, Bangor, Fargo, Manchester, I cleaned up the entire neighborhood. Come out uh, uh, today, start doing trash. Doesn't even look like it. <laughs> <laughs> All back on the road, so um, it, it, it's like this every year. We'll uh, we'll get through it, and it'll, it'll all disappear, and we'll wait again for next year. Well, we also appreciate you working your staff efforts to work diligently, work extra, and all that citizens happy. So, thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Um, I would just add, Mr. Flynn, your it's all. <laughs> Mr. Floyd, I'll just add that you don't have to get up unless you want to. That is always great to see your staff out at our events um, and the most recent with our tree lighting and the parade um, over the weekend. So um, to have those trash cans out on Thursday night, um, folks just take that for granted. But to see your staff out and they're always so friendly and I appreciate that. Please pass the word along. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, who do I hear on the agenda? A motion to adjourn. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All right, with that, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, lights on. The ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you. All right, um, I'm going to call to order the billing codes committee. It is December the 6th at 6 p.m. All members are present. As well as our department head, um, Mr. Deerhog, and our city administrator, Mr. Madden. Um, do we have any public comments? Good evening, everybody. I'm not that good at public speaking, but I'm going to read what I wrote it down. Um, <clears throat> my name is Jigar Patel. I have a gas station on the North Main Street Mountain. My concern today is about that new zoning ordinance that will not allow us to do the proper enter business from December 2022. So last week we received a letter from city zoning department about that. Now I remember uh, CTI plan to change the zoning from commercial two to CID back in 2017, 2018, and uh, we have a van door and trade new van. I think that's the previous city administrator came in and requested the support for the chain. We supported that time. We are meeting with the Kim Hammer, which is the 
one of the city zoning director that kind of signed the CRD zone with that group. During our, our conversation with Kim, she said that whatever the existing business we have won't be affected with the zoning change. Now, we have an email conversation asking the same question that what will happen if you change zoning, right? She said, no, nothing will change, everything will be grandfathered. What are the equities, right? We received a letter last week from David. David Dara. I know the city wants to clean the main street and develop the city center and everything. The highest priority. I'm okay with that. I supported that in the past. We will continue to support that in the future. But with the zoning change, I don't want to lose my business. This is the pandemic economy. We have a hard time to survive right now. And I would like to request the council to, instead of putting that sunset zone, which is basically restricting from December 2022, I want that to be grandfathered rather than, you know, limiting us. My business is surrounded by big corporate shops around us. It's been hard for me to compete with other big corporations. And this is the one of the other way we are trying to generate the reality. I appreciate you listening to me, and I appreciate that you can do necessary action to support my business. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> My name is Karen Sark. I own Sark's Automotive down the road. With the, I deal with U-Hauls also. Same thing as this gentleman. Uh, I've been doing it since 2013. And changing the ordinance, you've taken about $40,000 a year, which is an employee salary, away from us. So, I mean, I would suggest probably grandfathering us in to do it, to keep U-Hauls and stuff from, excuse me, going and, and going there. Because, I mean, I hate to get rid of an employee because we get rid of doing new halls in the city of Malden. Doing new halls actually brings people to Malden and they actually get to see what Malden's about. If they're having to drop off in Greenville, they're going to see Greenville, not the city of Malden. Any questions? Um, what are we here on reading and approval of the minutes? We're on the number of the first. Move for approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Any uh, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Um, aye. Okay, we have reports for communications from our city officers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, committee. I'll uh, start with our budget report. As you heard from uh, earlier department head uh, about the ideal of 80%, it's 58% right now. We have 64% remaining in our budget, so we're in good shape so far. And I'll just add as well for our report to say that um, our continue to issue permits and uh, do building inspections at a higher level than, than we have in the past. And, in fact, we've been so busy with inspections, we've had to lean a little bit more on RCI, who's our third-party inspector, to help supplement some of that load a little bit. But uh, we're trying to keep that um, under the best control we can to keep our costs under control. That's all the report I have tonight. Do you have any questions about it? Any questions for Mr. Devin? Okay. Um, we have no other unfinished business. As we'll move on to our new business, Mr. Bernal. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. The first item we have on our new business is a request for a rezoning at 301 East Butler Road. This property is a half acre in size, uh, right across the intersection at Butler and Bethel. 
right by the CVS there, across the street from the CVS. The applicant's requesting to rezone this property from R12 to C2, which would go from residential to commercial. Right now, there is a single family dwelling on the property, and it's a rental property. Um, the owner is planning to convert that home to an office for his real estate company, Clive Realty. And the, if, if he does move forward with that, he'll be required to include additional provisions such as parking and landscaping as required by the code. This did go before a public hearing last week with the Planning Commission. There were no public comments provided at the hearing. And the Planning Commission voted unanimously five to zero to recommend approval of this rezoning. Glad to answer any questions that you might have about this application. Any questions for Mr. Gerhardt? Hearing that, what do I hear on this ordinance to rezone the property at Rio One Spelling Garden? Move it forward, Hanson. Do I have a second? Right. Any discussion? Hearing that, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Um, all opposed? The ayes have it. All right, so next are the amendments to uh, the signing order. Mr. Gerald. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, actually, this item is the subject of some public comments that we just heard uh, earlier. Uh, as you'll recall, earlier this year, the city adopted an amendment to the zoning ordinance that included a uh, new organization of, and, and descriptions of the various uses that are allowed in the different zoning categories that the city has. This included a provision that existing trailer rental activities and operations that are not in the S1 district must cease no later than December 31st, 2022. Um, Recently, the city provided notice to those who are operating this type of activity outside the S1 district, let them know that they, uh, in order to comply with the ordinance, will need to cease no later than December 31st, 2022. Uh, during this, the course of this, staff did receive a comment about the um, clarity of the language in this ordinance. And so what you have before you tonight is uh, some just tweets to that section of the ordinance for your consideration, just to give it a little bit more clarity of, of uh, better describing what is what uh, is supposed to be described and included in this provision. The uh, new, the, the rewording of the ordinance would, would be section 3-12-3.8, cessation of moving truck and trailer rentals and sales. And we'll read as follows, moving truck and a rental, trailer rentals and sales not in the S1 district that had, been, that had previously been allowed shall cease all moving truck and trailer rental and sales activity no later than December 31st, 2022. No moving trucks and trailers for rent for sale or otherwise stored on the property shall remain on the premises after that date. Um, and as used herein, moving trucks and trailers shall mean trucks, including box trucks and cargo vans, trailers and containers primarily used for storing, moving, and hauling goods. This does not include car rental services, which rent pickup trucks primarily used for personal transportation instead of transporting goods. And it's that latter clause that's primarily been added to the section to provide the clarity of what's supposed to be what the intent is for this section to cover. That's a... okay. So, um, just to be clear, this um, the city council adopted an amendment on April 19, 2021, for the uh, cessation of the moving of trucks, trailers, rentals. Uh, and, and this is just to kind of clean up the language. Right. right. Um, any questions for Mr. Griffin? Uh, what do I hear on 
this amendment. Full council. Move it forward, full council. Do I hear a second? Five seconds to move to full council for more discussion, more input. All right. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. All right. Aye. aye. All right. All opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, so we move on to the next item um, on the agenda, which is a discussion of annexation procedure. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we've heard recently and, and over the years from some primarily uh, county residents who are concerned about the process by which this thing annexes property. And so we've just included this as a discussion point tonight. If, if there is any interest on the part of this committee to consider any adjustments to the process that we follow for annexation, um, but you have in your report a very simplistic uh, overview of that process that the city follows, which is primarily that someone would submit an application or a petition for annexation. It would be reviewed and actually taken by this committee. Um, if this committee so chooses to forward it to council, that would go to council for first and second reading. Um, I've included in your packet. Uh, Overview of the procedures that our neighboring towns, including Simpsonville, Greenville, and Greer, follow. And you can see that each one is a little bit different. Uh, each community seems to have uh, its own version of, of how they proceed on annexations. But um, the gist for what you see in the neighboring communities is that they also include uh, a scheduling and advertisement of the public hearing to do by the planning commission. And the planning commission will review that and take action on a recommendation. Um, so at this time, we're simply just seeking counsel or the committee's direction as to whether you want to discuss this more, leave it as is, uh, seek legal advice from the attorney, or or whatever uh, whatever other action you might like to recommend. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Gerhard. Um, any questions for Mr. Gerhardt? I kind of um, like the idea of scheduling an advertisement at the public hearing conducted by the planning commission um, that some of the other cities are doing. It just gives the neighbors of property the opportunity to come before a body and um, Voice their concerns. Um. I, I think that the, and this is just me, if you ask my thing, um, I think that it works well as is. Um, I, I think that you know we have when it comes to annexations, we may have a little more understanding and a little additional information that others may not have um, that helps us make the decision that we believe is an elected body is best for the city. Um, you know, whether it is another municipality that may be looking to annex the same piece and us being able to get there first. Um, Cost savings that could be realized, revenue generated uh, that could be realized. I, I just think that we we are in a position right now that uh, we're still small enough as a city where this works. Um, we may get to a point where we need to add that additional step. I, I'm I'm good with everything as well. Mr. Black. I guess that's all we have. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Barrow. Okay, any other comments? I 
each year. So maybe, um, my name is Joel and Jane, and I live on one kind of judiciary mode, and I would like to recommend that they get some better lighting for the cultural center. Uh, I went to the public hearing over there and I was coming down the steps and I totally missed the bottom step that fell out there. But um, anyway, I would like to recommend that they get better lighting for the cultural center because the steps are not going to be there at all. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other public comments? Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Any committee concerns? All right. Hearing none, we're going around the So moved. So we are confirmed at seven o'clock p.m. And that is all for the meetings tonight. Thank you for coming.